Okay, we're now set up to measure the voltage across each of these. I'm going to set my battery, my voltmeter to 20 to start out. I'm going to measure across the resistor, or excuse me, not the resistor, the battery. Make sure you turn it on. Okay, 2.97 we'll use for that. Now, if you're watching these videos in sequence, I do want to warn you that my battery is running down over time. And I actually had done this video earlier, but I had the wrong resistor in place. So I came back after I did the more complicated circuit for part three. So the fact that my voltage is a little bit lower than it was should be surprising, but that helps explain it. The voltage here over time will run down to the point where the batteries can't be used anymore. But notice it's still up around three. Most electronic devices would not notice that difference. So now I'm ready to measure the voltage across each of these and it's parallel circuit. So don't be too surprised by these measurements. But what I'm going to try to do for each of them is get the top one in with the wire that it's connected to, even though I could connect it anywhere at the anywhere down here. So this is going to be resistor one, 2.94 volts. If I go to resistor two, Two point nine four volts and resistor three two point nine four volts. Let me get my wrists out of the way there. So you can see the settings on the voltmeter and then move them this way so you can see that I am connected in the right spots. So those are the voltages for the parallel circuit. We're now ready to measure the currents through each of these. And as is usually the case, measuring the currents can be a bit of a pain. So notice what I've done here is I have taken this guy, the connection for resistor one, set it off to the side. And now what I'm going to do is measure from here, which is the upstream part from the battery. And I'm going to measure the downstream part, which is going into resistor one. Okay, notice that's a voltage. That's not what I want. This is a current. So I need to have it in amperes. Now I hook that up. And notice that 20 milliamps is too sensitive. So now I go to 200 milliamps. And it looks like I've got 28.8 milliamps. Okay, always need to make sure that I put things back in place. Okay, now I'm disconnecting uh, resistor two. Right now, no current is going through it, but when I hook the power back up, still there's no connection to this one. But if I test over here in that row that has the power to it, and then I measure over here, I've got 13.1 milliamps. Okay, pop this back over. Pull resistor three out. Okay, 
Okay, and I just took a second to double check under here to make sure nothing had come dislodged. And it looks like we're still in good shape. Now I'm going to measure from... Get my hands out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. In where the power is, over to resistor 3, 0.62. For the uh, milliamps, that's going through resistor 3. And just to make sure that I get all the data that I need, I'm going to get the battery now too. So the battery, I can either measure at the beginning as the power is coming in, or I can measure as it's going out. So the power or the current's coming in, the power, current and power is going out. What I'm going to do here is connect to the top end of the battery, put that into the circuit. I get 47.6 amperes. Notice that was too much for my 20 milliamperes. So right up here we've got 47.6 milliamperes not amps, milliamps. And all that current that goes in should equal all the current that goes out. And lo and behold, 47.6 milliamps again. So one of the things that you should realize with circuits is there's a bunch of checkpoints that you can do for these. You can measure the current in, the current out. If they're in parallel, you should be able to measure the voltages and check those are the, are the same. As you play with more and more circuits, that type of thing will become a little bit more natural. And in later classes, you may run into obviously more complicated circuits than these guys. A circuit that just has resistors in it isn't very useful, but this might be part of a bigger setup. Okay, now that we're done with the uh, parallel circuit, we can move on to the more complicated circuit that has a combination of series and resistors, or yeah, resistors in series and parallel both in the same circuit.